Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is show you how to graph y equals 2 ln of negative x. So again, I look at my transformations, and since I'm multiplying by a negative number inside of my natural logarithm, I am going to reflect about the y axis. All right. So the first thing, though, I want to do is graph my logarithm with no transformations. And then I'll actually graph it with the transformation. All right, or with the, at least the reflection we have here. So the first thing is I want to go ahead and determine these values that I'm going to have. And to do that, when you're dealing with natural logarithms, remember you know you have a base e, right? So a lot of times when I was converting them to exponential form, it was very basic. But when we're dealing with e with an irrational number, you can't really do so many um, in your head that's going to work. So I still can create a table, though. And if I was going to create a table, um, and actually, you know what? I could even, yeah. If we approximated e as 2.72, even though it is irrational, um, there's a couple points that I could pick without I have to go through all these different um, equations. So one thing I could do is, you know, if I could pick my value of 1, and if I have ln of, of 1, we know that that is going to equal, I'm sorry, ln of 0, ln of 0 we know equals 1. Because e, no, ln of 1, that's right, ln of 1 equals 0. Because here we have e raised to the 0 equals 1, right? OK. So if I put a 1 in for x, right, we know ln e raised, e raised to what power gives you 1? Well, that's going to be 0. So therefore, ln base e of 1, so if I was going to do 2, uh, so if I said y equals 2 times ln of 1, ln of 1 we know is 0. 0 times 2 is just going to be 0. So therefore, y equals 0 when x equals 1, hence given our x-intercept at 1 comma 0. Yes? Yes. Then another one we could say is, what about if x equals e? So if I said 2 equals 2 times um, ln of e. Well, e raised to the e power is just going to be 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So when e, when x equals e, y equals 2. So I could go up to 2. Now remember, e is approximately 2.72. That's approximate. It's an irrational number. It goes on and on. So at, let's see, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 4. So at 2.72, so 2.72, I know y equals 2. All right, so my graph's going to look something like that. All right, pretty rough estimate here because I'm, again, I'm approximating this point, which is e, comma, 2, or what I'll do is 2.72 approximate, comma, 2. All right, so that's, what that, that's now what my parent graph is. And now what I need to do is reflect this about the y axis. So instead of my points now being positive, then now I'm going to take this graph and reflect it over the y-axis. So when I go ahead and graph this now on an xy coordinate axis, instead of going over 1, I'm now going to go to the left 1. And instead of going over 2.72, I'm now going to go to the left 2.72 up 2. All right, and what's very nice about this is you can see over here, my asymptote is at x equals 0. My domain is all positive numbers, so it's going to be from 0 to infinity. And my range is from negative infinity to infinity. Well, when I reflect the graph over the y-axis, you can see now my domain is all negative numbers. So my domain now is from negative infinity to 0. My asymptote did not change. Just because I reflected over the y-axis, my asymptote is still going to remain the same, which is x equals 0. And my range has not changed either. That will be from negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a natural logarithmic equation with a reflection about the y-axis. Thanks.